Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the Gateway Live Update. It is Wednesday in the 20th of October. Do you believe it's the 20th of October already? And here we are in October, the end of October, last 11 days. And it's going to be November and it's going to be Thanksgiving and it's going to be Christmas and it's going to be New Year's. And when you get my age, you see how fast those days go by. Welcome to the Gateway Live Update. We're a 15 minute just encouragement and teaching of the Word of God here in the prayer time that we have noon on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of the week. Really, lately, it's been when we're available, which we are today. We're a little late today because of the problems we have here in Woodbury with Xfinity Business, as who supplies for us. We go down, we get clogged up, but today we're good, so... Right now we're good. Anyhow, we weren't a couple minutes ago. But we welcome you along to this edition of the Gateway Live Update. Um, today, I'm going to be speaking from the book of Hebrews about the Lord Jesus and you. In Hebrews 3.12, it says, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Now you're saying, I would never do that. Well, let's listen to the exhortation. See to it that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encouraging one another daily, as long as it is called today. Hey, when it's ever today, that's today. So we need to encourage today. Tomorrow, when you see somebody, it'll be today. And you encourage today. As long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You see, God wants encouragement from other believers. Not just you and yourself by Jesus, but encouragement from other believers. And you to encourage other believers to help with the deceitfulness that comes from sin. Do you understand that? That's why the body of Christ is so important. That's why it's important that it's not just me alone. Listen, I, could, I do. I spend times, hours alone with the Lord. But it isn't that. It's around other believers in Jesus, our Messiah, that gives me the ability to exhort and to encourage and to build up and to strengthen others. You see, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Remember the love one another thing? That's a big deal with God. Well, the writer of Hebrews says you got to watch out. Because you got to do it as long as it's called today. So that we're not hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is so deceitful. Verse 14, we have come to share in the Messiah, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. Just as it was said there in the law. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Remember, the children of Israel, they hardened their hearts and they got in lots of trouble. Who were they that were hardened and rebelled? Were they not all Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies were perished in the wilderness? I says it nice there. The writer of Hebrews is nice when he addresses this. They sent spies into the land, remember? And the spies, remember them guys? They went out and checked out the land and 10 of them went and all but two of them were saying, there's giants in the land, we're like grasshoppers. And they were terrified. And the people listened to them. Joshua and Caleb came back saying, wow, there's fruit and milk, just like God said. It's an abundant, beautiful land. We're going to get this. God is so good. The people didn't listen to Joshua and Caleb. They listened to the negative crew. You know, that happens today, doesn't it? Hey, you're watching on Facebook, social media. People listen to negative. That's what they do. And here we see, after research, that fake book itself, this evil organization, and Twitter, and Instagram are all owned by people who want us to argue. They want you to argue with the atheist and they put that in and keep the politics to keep us fighting. And they're one-sided. That's what they do. 
and we give in to the deceitfulness of sin. And you'll see us, even yours truly, on Facebook arguing with some jerk atheist who has something to say and nobody listens to him. And so we waste our time doing that. That ought not be so. We don't do that. Instead, you and I should be encouraging and uplifting. And we have to get in our minds that we're not going to dispute on social media and say horrible things, because I, I really hear, and even Christians among Christians, the Calvinists and the non-Calvinists, I hear the most horrible, horrible things ever said in my life. I, I Stuff I can't believe, so disrespectful of people who died to themselves and are alive to Christ, going back into the flesh and living in the flesh again. That ought not be so. That's what he's saying here. The deceitfulness of sin. The deceitfulness of sin, because it's so deceitful. He said, listen, wasn't that Moses and them? Yeah. Well, Moses was the one that sent the spies out. The guys came back. And the people listened to the majority who said, the majority who said, oh, we're like, we're going to get stomped on like grasshoppers. We don't have a chance. They're giants. And Joshua and Caleb, who came back and said, wow, God is good. You see, originally, I don't know if you guys know this, but originally God's plan was, this is what was going to happen. God was going to go in and he was going to wipe everyone out with the death angels. That was going to happen. And the people were going to go in. But because of sin, that didn't happen. Do you understand? It's because of unbelief. That's what's going on in the passage we're talking about. It was unbelief. They believed the, the bad story. They believed that God brought them out to the desert to die. They believed that if they went in and took the land, they were going to be destroyed. They didn't listen to the word of God. He said, go in. And it's going to be yours. You're going to live in houses you didn't build, fields you didn't dig, animals you didn't raise. It's all going to be yours, guys. That's what he said. You're going to be blessed. But the people did not listen to the Lord. That's a dangerous thing. Right now and today, if we don't listen to the Lord, we need to listen to what God said and act upon it not doubt his word it's so easy to doubt his word but that's not what he wants he wants us to hearken to listen to his word not to have our hearts hard and that's true and i hope and i pray and i really 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 encourage you to listen to the lord Jesus Christ. That's what I say. It's easy to listen to the enemy when he's telling you, you're going to be crushed like grasshoppers, like crickets in October. You're going to get crushed underfoot. It's easy to believe that, isn't it? It takes faith. It takes trust to believe the Lord. And so I encourage you, I exhort you to follow what God says and do it. It's so simple. It's so simple. Now, what about that with us? We're not going to land and killing a bunch of people. We're, we're here living the spirit-filled life on this land, and we should be led by the spirit. The Holy Spirit's not going to make you argue and fight with people and yell at them and get mad at the people who are on the other side and and the d's and the and the c's and everything else that that's not what we're to do we're to live like jesus jesus stood against religious people but with the non religious people with the regular people he loved and he helped and he cared for 
And that is exactly what you and I should do. Hey, what are we going to do when we need to listen to Jesus? And we don't do it. It's a bad, bad, bad deal. It is. So let's do something amazing. Let's listen to Jesus. Let's follow what he said. And let's encourage one another. That's that simple. It really is. And not get in arguments about this president that's in office and, and the people that are under him. It's easy to get upset and argue about that. God wants us to do something even mightier, and that's pray. So can we do that? Now, I know there's time to pray and there's time to do something about it. I agree with that. But we need to pray. And so we're going to do that right now. I encourage you to stop what you're doing. Even if you're busy, if you're scanning through Facebook or YouTube or whatever you're doing, stop a minute and let's pray. And Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can listen to your voice, Lord, that we could do what you said to do. And that we don't have to get hyper about things you didn't say to do. Help us, Lord, to live for you. Help us, Father, to be strengthened in the faith and to be filled with the presence of your Son, that we carry your Son in us, with us, wherever we go. Because you said, Father, that your Son and you would make your home in us. So let's allow that to happen, to share the love of Jesus. We thank you for him, Lord. I pray for anyone who's sick, especially anyone that might still have COVID, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would heal, that you would touch, that you would raise up, Lord. Father, I pray for protection of those who do have COVID, Lord, and go into hospitals where bad things happen to them. Please, Lord. Help us in this culture and today, Lord, and what's going on. We need your help. Help us with the politics, Lord. Please straighten things out your way for your kingdom. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, we encourage you. We're here. We hope you come tonight. Tonight at Gateway Christian Church here in historic Woodbury, New Jersey. We'll be here at 7.30 p.m. for worship and the Word of God verse by verse in 1 Thessalonians 4, which is a dynamite chapter. And it's so relevant to today that it's hard not for me to talk about it right now. We have to join us tonight at 7.30 for that. Um, if you want to, our email is here right on this same Gateway Christian Church Facebook page, or if you're on my personal page, it'll be pasted in a few minutes. And I hope that you check it out. I hope that you join us tonight. If for some reason you can't make it, which it's better to make it, worship in person. But if you can't make it, and even if you come tonight, we have a section that's roped off just for people with masks. No one else is allowed to go back there. Please feel free to stay back there and feel safe. For the rest of us who uh, can just worship, we could worship together and shout and sing to the Lord and bring your Bible for 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Probably going to be two parts because it's so action-packed. So join us tonight at 730. We would love to see you. Really would. We also encourage you to continue praying. We have our daily prayer tonight at 9. After service is over, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, just drop a few minutes and pray. Pray. If it's a minute, two minutes, three minutes, pray. We encourage you every night at 9, seven days a week, set the alarm on your phone to pray at 9 p.m. It's really good for you. It's good for everyone else, too. So we encourage you to do that, to pray tonight at 9, to join us 7.30 before that for service. Some people still here. You can pray with them. And Sunday morning, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians 9, verse by verse. It's going to be really good. Join us. We'll see you then. And until we greet you on the even, we pray that God's richest and blessed be yours.